What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is episode 33 of our blind Pokemon Sun and Moon Let's Play. In the last episode, we finished off by uh, beating Acarola's Trial and getting the Ghostinium, and uh, a lot of stuff happened between the end of that episode, which was yesterday evening, and today's episode, which is uh, today morning. So um, I will show that on the screen now. And there you have it. So you can see a lot of things, uh, a lot of things going on there. A lot of trades, a lot of battling. Basically, that all came from the fact that it took me probably over 50 encounters to find Muku Muku. And the, uh, did I say Muku Mi <laughs> Mimi Q? I like mixed Muku Muku with Puku Muku. Um, but no, it took me like 50 encounters. And honestly, there was a period of time there where I seriously did not think he was in there. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I did look up on the internet to make sure I wasn't crazy in thinking that that was the location to catch him and so I just I wanted to check it out on the internet because about you know 30 battles in you start to wonder whether or not there's something going on there maybe he only showed up as part of um, when when they call for help um, and so I just I just wasn't sure in addition prior to me looking it up um, I had asked in my GBA Discord chat, and no one responded, so I looked it up, but then shortly after that, someone responded with another spoiler, so unfortunately, between this episode, there are, there are two spoilers that happened, if you consider me looking up something I already thought I knew a spoiler. It turns out I, I did know right, but I did look it up, which, uh, so I have, to be, I have to be level with you guys. The other thing that um, got spoiled for me, unfortunately, is a Pokemon that I never would have found so I guess I feel a little bit more okay with it um, but it's it we're gonna I'm not gonna spoil it for you guys you're just gonna experience with me the act of it happening now together we're gonna do it together uh, just know that this isn't me randomly stumbling upon something which is kind of the fun of it and that's why I try and avoid it but the game's been out for a while now and it's really difficult it's starting to get difficult to avoid spoilers because um, I still need to be a part of the communities that I'm a part of, and unfortunately some of those get spoiled. This is not a spoiler. This is me just happening to realize when they told me to come here, um, they it, I realized that this is also where the, the fossil guy is. So we're actually going to turn in that f plume... Plume? No, I didn't get plume. I got shield fossil that we got a couple of episodes ago. So uh, I do have a fossil on me. Uh, it's the armor fossil and lickety split. He's gonna make it into a Pokemon. So this guy, this rancher style dude, just chilling in a in a trailer park. Uh, it's a shield on. Excellent. So that's what I predicted it was gonna be. Uh, so I did a lot of GTS trading, guys. And here's a little fun fact for any of you who are kind of playing along with me. Um, Clef keys are not that uncommon in the thrifty Mega Mart. I caught maybe nine of them or so in the process of uh, being in there 
And those things traded me for a lot of stuff. As you saw earlier when I did the, the quick reel of all the stuff that I got. Uh, they traded for a lot of cool things, and so I'm actually going to completely reformat my team. I got a, several members of my team who aren't going to evolve. Several more of them that I'm still trying to figure out how to evolve. At this point, I'm pretty confident that they have... I mean, it's almost assured that they have unique evolution chains that I, I have to figure out one way or another. So let's quickly go through the box together, all of us. This is going to be a lot of cleanup here, so... Uh, it is a mess down here, but basically what's going to happen is um, I'm dropping from Mantis. I'm going to take that held item from him first, and then I'm dropping from Mantis. There's no, I need to clean this up a lot. Okay, we're done reorganizing, so now let's, uh, let's talk movements. We're going to move. The golem is done. He's fully evolved. At this point, I would just be using him if I actually wanted to use him, and I don't really. The Glalie... No, sorry. The Snorunt is female, and so would become Frostlass. Uh, so I'm going to deposit it for now, because simply because I, I'm not that interested in evolving it yet. I would just be doing that as part of completing the decks, uh, since it's an old Pokemon. So I don't really... I don't need to see what it evolves into. Bugnitude, we know, evolves into Vikavolt. Or at least we presume it does since we saw that evolutionary chain while we were trying to get the uh, Lightningium or Thunderinium uh, Z crystal. Still don't know how or what I'm missing about it yet. So there's, there's some conditions I've got to figure out. From Mantis, we have evolved, so we no longer need him. Uh, and Crab Brawler, we saw, has one more in its evolutionary chain. And again, don't know how to evolve him either. Lil P is the starter, and so I kind of want to keep Lil P around just because I, I love her. Um, but of we got a few new new Pokemon here. So Marini, uh, we were able to trade for Marini, and we know that Marini evolves once. So we could bring Marini in. And then we also got the other two starters, and those guys both evolved too, so you know what? Let's have a little starter party, huh? What do you guys think about that? Uh, we've already evolved the Morlull into the Cheyenotic. Um, Comfy doesn't evolve. Min um, Minior doesn't evolve. Pu uh, Mimikyu doesn't evolve. Passimian doesn't evolve. Uh, Oranguru doesn't evolve. Wishiwashi doesn't evolve. And Honej and Kangas Khan are both um, not from Gen 7. So we now have a full team waiting to evolve. And this is going to be very exciting. So let's heal up because I was in there for a long time. And um, I need some evolutions. At this point, Crab Brawler and Bugnitude have been on the team for a long time. I'm going to have a hard time letting them go. They feel like core members of the team. Uh, kind of like Baby Nick did when I finally deposited him. That actually, that hurt me a little bit because I felt like Baby Nick was a part of the team. A lot of these other Pokemon, they, they come and go. You know, they, they're on the team for a little bit because I'm trying to evolve them, but they never they never feel like core members. I don't really, I don't have fun using them because maybe they're too weak or, or something like that, but they, they never feel true to the team and so those ones when they do come and, and I feel like I've experienced something with them that one's hard so you guys might remember in one of the episodes I came down in this little area and I saw something on the ground and I kind of chased it around and then, it, and then it, it ran away well unfortunately what was spoiled to me is that that's a Pokemon that I haven't seen before so um so I see it there, and the goal is to try and catch it, and now we get a battle with it. So I did get it this time. Last time I was on foot, and so it was faster than me, so I couldn't catch it. And this is Wim, uh, Wimpod, um, which has an evolution which was spoiled for me. However, the name of that evolution, or, or what the Pokemon is, was not. Uh, so... So luckily, what we know here is that there's a, there is a new Pokemon. I was stupid and I missed it earlier, and I wonder if you guys knew that, and so you were watching that episode and you're like, God, go back and get it. So I see a lot of comments of people telling me that I have missed things, and thank you for those of you who are able to do that in a spoiler-free way. A lot of you tell me tell me those things and, and don't spoil anything, and I really do appreciate that. So, um, 
My friends advise that I quick ball it. I, I assume if they if they worded it like that, then that means that it probably is one of those fleeing Pokemon. So hopefully this will catch it. Um, and it did. Wimpod. So this one's going to have to join our team so that we figure out what it evolves into. Um, oh man, and here, come the ex here come the level ups. Here come the level ups. Is it really necessary for them to do it one level at a time like this? Like, oh, now it grew from one to two to three to four. Why didn't they just say it evolved to nine? And here's what you missed along the way. All the moves and stuff. Lick? No. I mean, it might have been useful during the leveling process, but it, it's probably not all that useful for me now. This Pokemon got a ways to go before they become <laughs> battle useful. So they're just going to be sitting in the back collecting uh, experience. <laughs> oh my goodness. There we go. So they're they're leveling up. We get Wimpod's data added to the decks. Oh, okay. So, uh, Galissapod. Wimpod evolves into Galissapod. Galissapod is the Pokemon that um, Gladian used. Was it Gladian? I think it was Gladian. No, that was type null. Um, when we were in the when we were in the uh, the Melee Gardens, I forget who we battled, but we battled some sinister fellow, and he had a, a Galissapod. Um, so I do well. Hmm, that changes things because I was gonna use him and try and evolve him, but now since I know what he evolves into, I think that's less important. I mean, who could he take place of? Okay, as soon as I've evolved Marini, as soon as I've evolved Marini, we'll we'll bring in this uh, this Wimpod. Because I don't want to drop McBro, I don't want to drop Bugnitude. I got to keep them around for a little bit longer. So for now, um, we'll do this. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep Marini on the team, but uh, I do need to nickname this guy. Oh, it's too late. I I missed the opportunity, didn't I? Yeah, that sucks. Oh well. So there we go. There we have it. A fun little adventure. He dropped an item. It's a big pearl. Very cool. So now we've got uh, we've got Wimpod. So that was a fun experience. I'm glad I. I'm glad I. I I'm glad I went back. I wish I would have thought to go back on my own, and I, it didn't have to be told to me. Does that make sense? I wish. I wish someone didn't have to tell me, hey, you should go back and do something that you did. It, it could have been a fun experience for me to be like, oh, look, a Pokemon, and chased it down, and then leveled it up myself. Unfortunately, it's just that that wasn't how it worked out this time, so um, I'm disappointed in myself a little bit, but, oh, we got some bad guys. Uh, let's... Figure out my team. I need to put an amulet coin back on someone. I accidentally opened up the Pokedex instead of... McBro has been given an amulet coin. We're about to save Hows. Ooh, is this a triple battle? Plumeria. Oh, Plumeria. Was that the one? We were just talking about this. Was Plumeria the one who had the Galissapod? So she guesses it's her turn now, and these other guys are gesturing. What, I told you before, next time you get in our way, I'm not holding anything back. Okay. Okay, very cool. Team Skull Admin Plumeria. She's got two Pokemon, one of which is a Golbat. Maybe it wasn't her then. Was there a sec I knew she had two Pokemon before because what she did was led with the Glissopod, switched it out after it had Swords Dance set up on my face. Um, this is not a great matchup for me because Golbat resists Power Punch. However, I want to set up on Golbat. If I want to, if I want to take on the Glissopod, I, I want to get a Power Punch off. And kind of set up on it. But if I want to beat this battle without using items, probably Golbat dropping two air cutters on me will take me out. Two Dizzy Punches might do the trick. Uh, this is 70 power and I have Iron Fist. And I don't know that Crab Hammer is boosted from 
Iron Fist. That'd be interesting for me to find out. I should probably figure that out. But for now, I think Dizzy Punch will do the most damage. And probably not worth... Yeah, he's just going to go straight for the Air Cutter. I think two of these will take me out. It will. And he does outspeed me. So probably not worth me staying in with McBro again, unfortunately. Let's go straight into Lil P. Oh, I could have stayed in. But not really any reason to. He's going to go for the Poison Fang. Don't badly poison me, please. Good. He did not. Sparkling Aria will take out this Golbat. And then is the other one the Glissapod, or am I misremembering this? Uh... Oh, there's going to be so many levels going right now. Oh, gosh. So many... Oh no. Oh, that took such a long time. Okay, so no, Plumeria was not the admin that had the Galissapod, because it's using Salazzle. So, um, Poison, Fire. Uh, I'll just keep battling. Yeah, I'll just keep battling. Poison is super effective against me, uh, but Water super effective against it. And he opted to go for the Flame Burst in lieu of the super effective Poison Anything. Uh, you get Smog, could have had. Salazzle. Oh no, more levels. There we go. So, Plumeria. I know her eyes are closed and that's just eye makeup over the top of her eyelids. And she's like looking down, but it looks like she just has no soul right now. It's a soulless Plumeria. All right, now we get to see some evolutions. See the the Litten Chain. I don't I don't really need to see that much because this is what Hal has. So I've already seen uh, I've already seen Litten's first evolution. So I know what this one looks like. But I haven't actually seen Rowlets because no one they don't have a they don't opt to go the route that X and Y went, where one of your rivals got the one that was better than yours starter or super effective against it and the other rival did not and went with the third one they had an opportunity for that with lily lily could have just been a, a weak trainer and gotten the one that i'm super effective against but they didn't opt to do that so i actually don't know what rowlet evolves into but if i had to guess since he's a tiny little cute tiny little owl i i imagine there's just going to be a bigger adolescent owl and then maybe the third owl is when they can really play around. But I'm I'm anticipating just like either a fatter, maybe flying. It could be a mid-flight little like fluttery, slightly bigger bird. But I think it's probably just going to be like taller or fatter. That's a cool design. It just looks like a t. It looks like it looks like Rowlet just became a teenager. Dartrix. Dartrix. Like dart. Dark tricks. Ah, that's cute. And he looks like he's bowing or dabbing. So, like, I don't know exactly. What... He's going like this. So, like a mid dab, mid bow. Ah, that's cute. It throws sharp feathers called blade quills at enemies or prey. It seldom misses. Ooh. Ah, quill foresight. I don't. What? No. <laughs> I just had to avoid learning that. All right, so cool. Got to see two evolutions and got to meet Dartrix. So that was cool. Definitely a big fan. <laughs> I guess you are pretty tough. Now I understand why my grunts waste so much time battling kids. But if you want to return the Pokemon, then you'll have to come with us. Alone. The boss is dying to meet you. <laughs> see you at our base in Po Town. gesture oh battles you can't afford to lose aren't any fun hey are you guys okay so did they steal a bunch of pokemon and even though we beat them they're like well we're not going to give them to you my young goose we can't forgive this darn those numbskulls actually did something pretty clever for once but they stole from children that's not 
Uh, Team Skull has taken over Poe Town. It's basically the private playground. If you want blah, blah, blah. Find the guy in Route 15 who's wearing a kimono. He might be able to help get to you to Poe Town. Here, take this. Just get my young goose back. Is it a max potion? Rare candy. All right, that's actually useful. Kind of. I'm not going to use them, but it'll be useful later on. Is young goose going to be okay? We've got to find it. My circuits can't take this kind of stress. So, uh, we're off on the road to Rhode Island. Or something like that. What? Race over those waves with a Sharpedo. I don't have a Sharpedo. Uh, we've got an Ace Trainer chilling right here. And we got a grassy area here. And I was told to explore this grassy area in the comment section of an earlier video. And so I'm willing to bet there's a Pokemon here that I haven't caught. Ooh, a Sand Shrew. That's... <laughs> what? Oh my god, look at this thing. It's white now. So, looking like that, it could be normal type or it could be like the ice type because it's kind of like, it's got like the blue and the white. So it could be like powdered snow with like icicles. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, how do we find out? Fighting's not a good choice because if I think it's normal, uh, then that would also hit it super effective. Well, if it's one of those two, we'll learn if it's learn what it is based on whether or not that's that is super effective. So it's either normal or it's kind of got like an igloo-y kind of look, and it's like it's wearing a hood. I think that's ice type. That's got to be ice type. I'm pretty sure that's ice type. Um, no, we're gonna keep the old ones. Um, but either way, he's dead. And that, see now, now they got me thinking that maybe the the reason they wanted me to battle in this in this grassy area was for not for a Pelipper. See, if I'd gone through this zone without you guys uh, telling me, and thank you for the person who did tell me that they wanted me to battle in this in this grass for not telling me why, you know, not telling me the Pokemon that were potentially um, in this grass. You didn't list any names, which I I appreciate all this because I am. Waiting so long in the tr- Oh my god, that- Brian is like a 120 base power if I'm- I'm just gonna run, I don't even want to battle you. You know, I wait so long for this game and, and I want to explore it all and have all the fun of not having anything spoiled. But at the same time, I want you guys to have a fun time experiencing the game with me. And I don't think me battling endlessly in these areas when there's nothing to be seen is useful and if i had come here and i'd seen a pelipper as my first battle and a radicate as my second i wouldn't have fought i wouldn't have fought at all i would have just um i would have just assumed that there's nothing useful here and i would have given up okay there we go finally <laughs> I was just waiting to see something that wasn't a Raticate or a Pelipper, and we finally see one. It's a Slowpoke, which is great. Uh, I love Slowpoke. Slowpoke's an awesome Pokemon. Alright, so let's get Slowpoke added to the decks. That didn't take that long. It was quite a few battles, but I don't know. I just... Ooh, Synthesis. Cool. So Synthesis in lieu of, um, in lieu of Roost. Although I don't know that... Roost is a big deal for Dartrix, so probably, and the risk of synthesis not working as well in the sun is probably not ideal. So I think actually Roost, also because it has more PP, I think Roost is a superior option. Uh, losing the flying typing would mean you lose a resistance to fighting, um, but you already resist ground, so it doesn't really matter that, or it doesn't matter as much. Uh, I guess it also drops a, a, a weakness to rock type. I don't know. That's a that's a hard sell, but I feel like I would prefer Roost to Synthesis. Maybe it's just for the PP reasons. Uh, just competitively, I, I see that as a more viable option. Um, dropping the weakness to dropping the weakness to Electric is probably su really super useful. Ah, shoot. I probably should just run around. Oh well. 
So we're just gonna heal up. Um, heal up and then continue on our way. This episode's been a lot of kind of me talking and me looking for Pokemon. And not as much about me clearing this story, but honestly, I'm okay with that. Because I feel like sometimes that's what you need from an episode. Not every episode needs to be powering through zones, uh, skipping things, missing elements of the of the story or anything like that. I, I think it's fine for us to have have these moments together where I just sort of goof around and see what we have going on. Got a little Corsola over here. Uh, what did I do? I think I hit up by accident, so it brought up the Charizard fly menu. I, I just don't want to be on the, I don't want to be on the Tauros anymore. Kind of cumbersome. You. The kimono-clad fellow who's always flipping that coin of his. I hear he was once a famous trainer in the Innova region. Ooh. Very interesting. So, uh... Famous trainer from Black and White. Those Team Skull Thugs. I got away with my boat. And there's the Zygarde Cube. So creatures sucked into the Zygarde Cube. And here we speak with uh, a kimono clad fellow with gloves. Man, oh man. What is going on today? Someone actually bothered coming to this kind of sad place? That's, well, that's, I mean, that's not a nice thing to say. So I'm wondering... Oh, it's Grimsley. Okay, he was a member of the Elite Four. Um, he was like uh, Dark type, I think, from the Elite Four in Unova. So that would, yeah, black and white. He's gonna t <laughs> Uncle Grimsley is going to flip a coin. Will be heads or tails? Oh my God! There was something here. It was like always one or always the other, but I can't. I, I don't remember. I don't remember. Two-headed coin? <laughs> Astonishing. You just took a stab like some kind of prophet. Right now, you and your Pokemon are shining brilliantly. A loss is a loss. I'll give you Sharpedo's info for your ride pager. Oh, cool! So that's what the beginning of the route when we talked to the sign, it was like Sharpedo. That's what that means. Maybe you didn't hear this from me, but I'm going to tell you anyway. If you press B, jet forward and smash through rocks. Okay, so he's like the Tauros of the water. Here's a bit more unwanted advice. Poe Town lies at the other end of Route 16 here. But it's thoroughly occupied by Team Skull. You shouldn't go there unless you want trouble. Thanks, Uncle Grimsley. The infamous Po Town is a bit scary, but we got no choice but to switch it. Uh, we've also got a rippling water over there. Oh, uh, that's right. So, so Lapras is B button. I'm not really sure what it does. Um, we can read about it though, right? Um, with an X button, Lapras can swim across surface bodies of water hold down B to swim faster and if you have a fishing rod you can even get it from Lapras's back okay so can I not do that with Sharpedo swim across the surface bodies of water to do a Sharpedo jet jetting is a special action that can break some rocks blocking our way on the water so I guess you can't fish from Sharpedo's back um But, oh my god. He, uh, he's fast. And we got some, uh, we got a battle in the water here. Another Pelipper. Lot of Pelippers in this game. To be sure, to be sure. So is there anything over in this corner? I saw, like, a little... Maybe something. If you look across... You look all the way over there, there's someone like bowing. Look at the top. Just like bowing down to an item that's on the ground. I wonder if we're going to loop around. Looking at the map, it looks like we might be able to do that. So let's keep going this way. I'm actually going to I'm actually gonna pop a rappel. Um, because I want to just kind of cruise, cruise in USA through this part of the zone. Let's 
So we got a super repel going. As it is the most efficient steps per... Oh, I can't go that way. It's the most efficient steps per cost. Uh, more so than max repel and regular repel, obviously. I kind of just want to bash through all these just for funsies. Uh, but we got a side road here that we're going to... We've got to hop off. We've got a trainer and a TM. And she... Uh, Ace trainer, Carla. And she's got three Pokemon. So this is going to be something we skip through. Just a Vulpix that's... <laughs> Nice, Alolan Vulpix. Also, brilliantly white with those frosty eyes. So tell me that you're also ice type. Tell me. Tell it to me. Am I right? I am right. It is ice type. So we defeat Ace Trainer Carla. And continue on our merry little lamb. Ha, huh. no, merry little way. Wild charge, very cool. Uh, super high powered physical electric type move. Uh, we're still in the same zone that we were in earlier, I think. So, uh, it chooses to put me on the the Sharpedo here, which is cool. Sharpedo's actually kind of... He, like, glides a little bit. So, he, a little bit more difficult to control. Oh. Oops. But we can smash through all these rocks. Uh, and I thought I saw a swimmer here. So, let's, uh, let's complete this battle. He's got water-based tactics. I wonder if he's got... A drizzle Pelipper. No, just a Tentacruel. So let's keep going here. This is a very big zone. Lots of rocks to break. Very fun way to kind of explore here. So it does loop around to that bowing man that we saw earlier. This is such a big zone. Like, really is a lot going on. I see something on the map here. It's just rocks. Uh, let's land here. Oh, I'm sorry. They're not bowing. It's not a bowing man. It's uh, a couple doing sit-ups. I get pricked by Corsola or Puku Muku. Abs, 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 abs. <laughs> Yumi and Jake. Yumi's got a very pale look for a very, um, how do I say this, non-pale name. Call that. Let's, let's call that. Let's call it that. Alright, we defeat the couple. Uh, made quick work of those two, thanks to Bugnitude. Uh, we've got an item over in the corner here. And there's, let's be honest, there's probably, there's probably a big pearl here somewhere. Come on, little guy. Sniff out the trail. Really? No items? Alright. Trainer tips. If you collect lots of different berries, try planting them on Poke Palago's Isle of Plenty to grow and harvest more. That's cool. Let's hop on the, uh, the Sharpedo and continue through here. We've got another swimmer. But she's not a mermaid, though. That's <laughs> that's not a mermaid. She's just a regular swimmer. And her name is Alexandria. And she's got a love disc. And Alexandria got defeated. And all three of her Pokemon dropped to the sheer force and majesty of MC Bro. His name's actually Mook Bro, but I don't know. Kind of funny. Uh, probably don't need another repel. We're about to get on the uh, the beachy sands over here, sniffing out a little bit while we're at it, looking around. Maybe some big pearls. 
Find a little cash to throw in the pocket. Aha! We're on the trail now. I found a pearl even though I didn't see it become a red exclamation mark. Uh, catch plenty of fish and keep developing... What? What did you say? Catch plenty of Pokemon and fill up those PC boxes and you can develop your Poke Palago. I still don't know what Poke Palago is. I know it's on the main menu. I'm not super interested in venturing into that just yet. Uh, Route 16. Go quietly if you dare go down this path. Interesting. This is actually a really big little corner of the zone here. A PP up for the medicine pocket. Trainer tips. You can drop off up to 18 Pokemon at a time in Poke Pelago's Isle Evil Up. Is that like level up? Is that... I want to know which Spinda has the best spots here. There's no way to put any spin on it. It's obviously the one right here. No, the one on the right. Look how deep and rich in coloration is its position. It's positively art. My Spinda spots have got to take top spot. And they're all talking about how the fact that... Ooh, a TM around the back. How do I get there? We crawling. We crawling, folks. X Scissor. Very cool. Competitively viable. How about you? Do you have any special items? Anything there? No. Um, okay, and so this is this has been a pretty long episode. Fun little exploration. And there's going to be a lot more for us to do uh, in this zone coming up. Ooh. Is this uh, Cena? Yeah. I've been waiting for you. Now I'll explain about the Resembly unit. Cena, you don't waste a, don't even waste a second. Have you been collecting Zygarde cells and cores? You've collected ten or more cells and cores combined. Anyway, I'll explain. The assembly unit is a device that has something to do with the Pokemon Zygarde. The machine is capable of assembly and separation of Zygarde. Assembly is to create a Pokemon called Zygarde. Now, Dexio, it's your turn. Oh, Cena, Cena, Cena. Anyway, there are two ways to assemble Zygarde. One is to add cells you collected to Zygarde. The other is to create a new Zygarde with only cells. Now we'll explain about separation. To separate Zygarde, it means to return Zygarde to its cells. Separated cells will be returned to the cube. For your information, according to the research by the professor who sent us to Alola, Zygarde is divided into 100 cells and cores. Depending on the number of cells and cores, the shape of the Zygarde will be different. In other words, Zygarde changes its form. Zygarde is said to maintain the order of the Kalos region, then why is it in Alola? Is it a sign that something is about to happen? If you collect Zygarde cells and cores, you may get the answer anyhow. We'll be taking our leave now. Bon voyage! So we've got a lot of stuff going on here. A little machine. What would you like to do? Um, I guess I want to assemble using Zygarde and the Zygarde cube using the Zy What does this mean? There are two ways to achieve assembly. One is to take a Zygarde in your party and add it to the cells stored in the cube. The other is to assemble the cells stored in the cube to form a whole new one. Um, well I don't have a Zygarde so it has to be the cube. Zygarde will be assembled with the core and cells within the cube only. Is that okay? Yes, I guess. I I'm still not 100% on, on what I'm doing here, but I've assembled the new Zygarde, which I will promptly put. It's a 10% form. It's gone into a Pokeball. Uh, oh, look at that thing. That's really cute. Very cute. Zygarde. Registered. <laughs> I'm not going to use Zygarde, but that's a really cool look. You registered Legendary. It's still Dragon Ground. This is Zygarde's form when about 10% of its cells have been gathered. Uh, would I like to give it a nickname? Not right now. And I'm going to send him just to the box. So when I gather more cells, it'll look bigger. And I guess I can break it back down into just cells or something. Could be useful. Um, 
I wonder which would come out on top if Taurus and Sharpedo were to go head to head. Me too. I also wonder that. Let's finish up this episode by kind of exploring to see whether or not we got any quests that we're going to go. Uh, that's talking about uh, an ability that makes crits or something. Uh, the power of alchemy ability will change its ability to the ability of a defeated ally. That's cool. Uh, receiver ability takes over the ability of a defeated ally, so its ability will be the same as its fainted allies. Okay, so we're talking like doubles. This looks like a quest. Quest giver, your trainer. Want to do a job? Sure. Information about Mimikyu. How about you go catch one? Okay, I already have one. So, and it teaches you that it's at the Thrifty Mega Mart. So if I'd given up and kept going, I would have gone back. So if you do a good job, I'll even pay you for the trouble. Well, I already... Yeah, there you go. So, side quest completed. <laughs> no problems there. Talking about scary ghost. A spooky ghost. Ghost bouncers. Thanks a bunch, pal. No need to be shy about it. 20k. See, that feels more appropriate for how difficult it was for me to find that Pokemon. Uh, same drink, different flavor in each cafe, just so for speak. So now we'll just heal up, and we're gonna call this one of those, uh, we're gonna call this one of those days we've been hearing so much about. Phone's blowing up. It's exploding. My phone is, has exploded. Uh, and then we're just gonna, we're gonna save, and then the next episode is gonna be us exploring, uh, exploring this route a little more closely. So let's save this up right here just for safety. And I will see you guys on the next episode. Thanks so much for watching. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the champions. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you guys next time.